What is going on everyone? Bryce builds it all your favorite AMP I8 and part 147 instructor back again with another video and this time I'm going to be talking about filling out FAA form 337s after major repairs or alterations. I'm going to give you three tips on how to fill those out. Might be a short video but stick around. Okay so the first thing I want to address is when you fill out a 337. Now I will add this video is directed at my students and people who maybe just got an AMP who are unsure about it, it's not necessarily for an IA who's been filling out 337s for their entire career. So if the advice I'm giving you is sort of broad, it's meant to be. I'm not narrowing it down to exactly what you should be writing. But the first thing to understand is that a 337 is a form that is supposed to accompany a major repair or major alteration. Now, a list of major repairs and alterations can be found in FAR Part 43, Appendix A, and if you are doing a major repair or alteration, you'll accompany it with a 337. So the first thing to understand about a 337 is some of the information that goes on the first page. Now, I want you to notice on the first page, it says that it should be filled out in accordance with a couple of FAR parts, and it also says AC 43.9-1. Now, Advisory Circular 43.9-1 will give you some more clear guidance on what exactly needs to go in each of those blocks. If you don't believe me, go pull that up. I'll even put a picture, I'll even put a video of this uh, advisory circular up while I talk through some of this. But in the first block is, you know, your, your owner's aircraft information, all the aircraft information, the owner's information, and all that good stuff. And I wanted to make a point here that, one, it is very important that when you fill out the owner's information, it is not the owner of the aircraft that matters, it's how it appears on the registration certificate. And I say that because it's not uncommon that an aircraft will be registered to an LLC. If it is, it might say Flyright LLC and then give an address that's a PO box. If that's what's on the registration certificate, that is who you put under the owner of the aircraft. You'll obviously fill out the aircraft information in the way that makes sense, Cessna 172, Beechcraft Bonanza, whatever it may be. Moving down, there's gonna say a block that says FAA designee only, you don't touch that. The next thing you will fill out is it says major repair, alteration, and there's an X and a check on each of those. It gives you one for airframe, one for power plant, one for propeller. I think it even gives you one for appliance, would be something like avionics, for example, if you were modifying a radio, okay? And then moving down from there, it gives the uh, conformity statement and the agency's approval for the return to service. So, and it also gives you the approved, unapproved uh, checkbox. Now, it's very important that first you get correct, is it a major repair or is it a major alteration? There are some things that are major alterations, I should say, should usually be accompanied with some sort of form of STCs, and major repairs are going to have some sort of other approval. If it came, if the repair is being done in accordance with an STC, for example, I just did a STC on a Bonanza to upgrade the rudder hinges because they were rudder hinges crack on those. That is a repair, but there's a mod it's also a modification, so it's a major alteration. It's not a major repair, if that makes sense, right? But the point there is you should be marking, is it airframe, is it power plant, is it propeller, is it appliance? Now, a key giveaway is that if the STC number starts with SA, it's airframe, SP, it's power plant. I forget what it is for prop, but it doesn't matter. You get the idea, okay? For the agency, that is who's ever performing the work. As an AMP, you can install all the STCs and you can perform all of the major repairs you wish to perform. You just can't approve them for return to service. So it's not uncommon to see an AMP's information in there. It'll have your name, your address, all that kind of good stuff. And then it'll say AMP certificate number and you'll sign and date. Then below that where it says agency approving the for return to service, that can be the same person if you're an IA. If you're not an IA and you're having an IA sign it off or a repair station or an FAA designee, they will mark that and they will sign off that block, making sure to check the approved box. It would be really dumb to check the not approved box and then send the 337 to the FAA, but I, I guess you could do that. And now the second thing that everyone really worries about, which is the description of work performed. Now it's important to understand that the description of work is not a logbook entry. On a logbook entry, if I'm say doing a 100 hour inspection, I would say performed 100 hour inspection and then start listing all of the things I did as well as all of the other maintenance that was performed. And you don't really wanna do that with a 337. You only wanna include the information necessary for that repair. Now again, AC, Advisory Circular 439-1, will give you some guidance on this and it should tell you that you should list all of the work that was necessary to perform the repair. So 
if you had to remove a wing to do a wing skin, you should say removed wing. But you're not going to say complied with 100 hour inspection, you know, greased and packed wheel bearings and changed engine. They don't care. All they care about is what was done for that repair or for that alteration. So keep it short to removed wing. Like this is an example of like if you were repairing the spar, right? Removed wing, removed skin, repaired skin, reinstalled skin, reinstalled aircraft, right? Now the AC again, it's going to give me some guidance and the very important thing this is my third tip here the very important thing with this description of work that with an stc versus a logbook entry logbook entry is just a brief description if you want to put that you repaired a main spar in accordance with the aircraft structural repair manual that's fine but for a major repair a you should probably have a der signing off on that major repair and if you did it in accordance with the structural repair manual it should say exactly what chapter and paragraph from the structural repair manual you used for that if you're doing an stc so you're doing a modification it should have all of the approvals of the stc it should say installed i'll give you like wing tips like installed quasar wing tips in accordance with STC number, it should list the installation instructions, it should list all of the ICAs, any information that was inserted into the POH. If the aircraft was weighed, it should say that the aircraft was weighed in accordance with the manufacturer's instructions uh, and so on and so forth. But the important thing is, is that you are putting the approved data that you did the repair or modification with. You don't have to do that on a logbook to satisfy 43.9, but you do have to do it in a 337. It's very important that you put all of the approved data that you followed. Now here's why I mentioned a DER. If you are doing a structural repair to an aircraft, it is always a good idea to consult with a designated engineering representative, even if you're following the SRM, to look at the repair you are doing and make sure that it conforms with the SRM and something that would be safe. And he is going to you know, give you a series of drawings that you have to perform the repair in accordance with. And you would say, you know, repaired wing spar in accordance with structural repair manual, chapter, whatever, and designating engineering representative, yada, yada, so on, so forth, his information and the drawings that he gave you. And those actually, those drawings and everything should be attached with the air, should be attached and kept with the aircraft records so that Anybody who buys that aircraft down the road doesn't stick a flashlight in the wing and go, there's a giant repair on this spar, and other than one STC that I got from a CD, I can't find any documentation for it. So, or not STC, other than one 337 that I found on a CD, I can't find any documentation for it. That shouldn't be the point. You should be keeping all of this documentation and inserting it into the aircraft maintenance records. Finally, on your work entry, you do not need to put an approval for return to service. This is something I see my students do a lot, just like they would do with a logbook entry. They will write, this aircraft is approved to service for the work performed. You don't have to do that. It's just a, it's just an entry of the work you performed. The approval for the return to service is going to be in the aircraft's logbook entry. And yes, just because you're filling out a 337 does not mean that you get to avoid doing a logbook entry. You still have to do both. So I realize this was a little short and a little sweet. I hope you found it informative at the very minimum enjoyable. If you would like me to do a little bit more of a deeper dive on this, maybe like a 15, 20 minute video and give you a lot of examples of here is one for a major repair. Here is one for a major alteration and so on. Here's one for an appliance, major alteration, so on and so forth. Let me know. I might be happy to do that. Might be a little ways down the road because I've got a bunch of videos planned coming up. But as always, I would like to thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to leave us a like, leave us a comment, subscribe, uh, follow me on Instagram, join the Discord, all of that good stuff that I always ask you to do. And as always, go build something and be easy.